Hello everyone, Hyper here, and in today's video I will be talking about every major mechanic in Battle of Thessauri lore that can be prevented, cheesed, or mitigated in any major way by Death Knights, using either AMS, Death's Advance, or Icebound Fortitude. I will go boss by boss and just outline every major ability they should pay attention to. So on Champions of Delight, obviously very easy boss fight, but there's essentially two things that you can mitigate. The first one, which is probably the less, Im less impactful one, is Wave of Light. So whenever you get hit by this wave that usually travels towards one of the adds, you end up getting a dot. If you AMS before getting hit by the wave, you won't get the dot. The dot is dispellable, so that's why I said this is not as impactful, because even if you do get hit, healers will typically just dispel you. The second mechanic here is Blinding Faith, that is cast by one of the adds. Now if you face towards them when the cast goes off, then you will simply get disoriented. However, if you AMS, then you will prevent this disorient and you can essentially just face them even if they are casting. This is essentially only useful uh, once you get to farm and you're actually trying to send the fr Frostworm's Fury from the boss towards the adds just to make sure you hit all of the targets. And just as a safety precaution, you can AMS in case that ad is casting Blinding Fate, just so you can make sure you get the Frost from Fury to hit everything. On progress, where only pretty much the boss damage matters, this won't really impact your gameplay. The second boss is Grong, and here there's a few things that you can mitigate, but nothing that you can really cheese. The first one is Ferocious Roar. Um, so whenever the boss casts this ability and you're not near an enemy or a friendly player, you will just get horrified. If you AMS before this cast goes off, if you find yourself running from an ad to the boss and there's no one nearby, then just AMS and that should prevent the fear. Now I didn't get to test this on Mythic um, or on Heroic for that matter, but it should still prevent the fear. Uh, we had a very low pull count on this boss, so I never really found myself in the situation where I needed to AMS this. The second thing is Tantrum. Now, Tantrum actually does nature damage, which can be prevented by AMS. So if you're ever in the situation where you might be two st doing a 3-stack Tantrum, so at 75 energy, you can simply AMS to mitigate some of that damage, especially on the second and third ticks. And as far as Death's Advance goes on this fight, uh, the only thing that you can pretty much Death's Advance is Lightning Detonation. And the only reason I would do this is if you're assigned to picking up the the orb and then dunking it on the boss. If you're just DPSing the ad and you're not assigned to doing the orb, then simply use the lightning detonation to get knocked towards the boss and that ends up working out way better. Now in any of these fights, if I don't mention Death's Advance or Icebound Fortitude, it simply means that there's no major mechanic that can be mitigated by it. Moving on to the third boss, uh, there's Basically everything on this fight does magic damage, so you can use AMS simply to get runic power. But as far as pre preventing and cheesing abilities, Magma Trap obviously does a huge burst of magic damage, and typically you can soak the first one without any cooldowns, just using Death's Advance to prevent that knockup. But any subsequent Magma Traps that you will want to soak, you want to AMS for, because they do a lot of damage. And the most I've done is two traps, um, I'm sure you can do three, if you even combine it with IDF or maybe ask for an external. But combining Death's Advance with some defensive cooldowns is definitely beneficial for these Magma Traps. Now, you can also Death's Advance the Ring of Peace during the Maze Intermission. So whenever you have to navigate that maze, you can simply take a Lock Gate for the first part or depending on how your guild has it set up, or just Death's Advance and run through all the circles through the, to the first safe path, which is essentially like hugging the left side. For opulence, there's not that many things that you can actually cheese, but there's a few things that are beneficial to AMS. First of all is the Ruby Beam. So this happens in a few of the rooms where a random player gets targeted by the beam and then it fixates them and you have to kite it around. Now if you AMS, you can actually tank a few ticks and kind of reduce the amount of room that's being taken up by this mechanic. Also Flames of Punishment on Mythic, it's essentially a one-shot but it is fire damage. So if you find yourself maybe lagging behind a little bit, you can AMS to basically survive one tick of the Flames of Punishment. Moving on to Conclave, here's really where we start getting more benefit from being a DK. 
First of all is Crawling Hex. So in the first phase before you kill Gronk, people will get hexed. And most notably this happens in the first, I believe, 10 or 15 seconds of the fight, something along that. And I found that it always went on me, so I tried pre-AMSing it. Right before the Crawling Hex came out, you can just keep an eye on the Big Wix timer or something, or DBM if you use. And right before it gets cast, just cast AMS. And if it goes on you, it will prevent it from being applied. So during progress, I always AMS this very first crawling hex, and it never went on me during my cooldowns. And obviously, as a frost DK, when you pop Breath of Syndragosa, you want to limit the number of mechanics that you, that you potentially have to deal with. The second thing here is Paku's Wrath. So this is the big AoE that everyone needs to run to the safe zone for. And our AMS almost lines up exactly with being able to use AMS on every single Paku's Wrath. So if you AMS on pool for the Crawling Hex, you will have it for the first Paku's Wrath. And then from there, you will essentially only use AMS on every single Paku's Wrath. So it prevents a lot of the damage and it also gives you quite nice amount of runic power. And during a few of the Paku's Wraths, you will actually have Breath of Syndragosa rolling, so that is an added benefit. Now, for that's advanced, the only thing that I could think of that you would want to potentially mitigate here is Krogwa's Wrath, and this is obviously the frog jumping on you and knocking you away. So if that does happen, typically you're in the circle and you get knocked into the storm, that's a no-go, so might as well that's advanced to avoid the ability to have a little extra movement speed or to prevent that knock-up. Um, on Mythic, I never tried this, so but I'm pretty sure it should work. Now the one thing that we do icebound on this fight is Kimball's Wrath. So when a few players get targeted by the pounds from Kimball, uh, you will have the little red indicator above your head. You will get pounced on and it will stun you. So if you do get stunned, you can simply IBF. I suggest using IBF right before you do get uh, pounced on because that will obviously prevent some of the damage and it will also prevent the stun rather than having to react to it. Uh, you just use it proactively and actually mitigate some of the damage. If you play Blood Elf as uh, DK and on, you're on Horde side, for this fight you will be a human. Same for Opulence. So you will have the Everyman for himself racial. Now, with Everyman for himself, you can actually again break the Kimball's Rat. And on Opulence, if you get hit by Crush, you can also break that stun. So just keep those two things in mind. Moving on to King Rastakhan. Here, I didn't actually proc this fight on Mythic. But there's a few things that you can actually AMS. First one is Plague of Fire. So if you AMS right before Plague of Fire comes out, it will prevent the application. And also, if you AMS and stand in someone else's Plague of Fire, it will not get spread to you. So if a Rage DPS dips dangerously close to melee, for example, you can just AMS and make sure it doesn't spread to melee and wipe your entire raid. The other thing is Deathly Withering. So as melee DPS, you will typically be sent down to Bonsandi's Realm to make sure to push that boss to the 50% mark, where you can then enter the last phase. Now in this phase, you will usually clear your stacks by running into the little death gates on the side. However, I noticed this last week that AMS will actually last through most of the debuff. So with Deathly Withering, it will just continuously stack, but if you wait about 2 seconds into the dot, because it will only refresh about 3 seconds into the dot if I remember correctly, so you wait about 2 seconds, then you press AMS, and you will actually end up having the dot tick off of you, and you will not have to run into a death door and obviously cause damage to the people who are in the normal realm. Then Death's Advance obviously here is a very very useful ability for Phase 3 and Phase 4, because you can death advance inevitable end. So whenever the boss is pulling everyone in towards him, you can simply wait for him to start the cast, and as soon as he starts that channel, you just death advance and you can just stand there and wait for the channel to be over. Moving on to High Tinker Mechatork, there's a few things here. First of all is Buster Cannon. I know this ability is pretty well telegraphed and it's easy to dodge, but if you happen to know that you're about to get hit, you can simply AMS, to prevent the dot and you can death advance to prevent the knockback so if you use those two abilities together you will just get some runic power and you know go on like nothing ever happened 
However, this does come with a pretty major downside. If you end up AMSing the Buster Cannon, you won't get AMS in case you get Gigavolt Charge. Now, if Gigavolt Charge goes on you, and that's the bomb that you have to go behind the rubble with, uh, you'll want to AMS right before it explodes. This is because it will prevent the dot that is applied to you. And then on Mythic, uh, if you AMS right before it explodes, you can actually end up staying there for a second or run through someone else's puddle that they left behind without gaining the dot. But you will essentially only get about one second um, or one tick before the dot gets applied to you anyway. So AMS here, very beneficial to, first of all, preventing all of the debuffs from the bomb exploding behind the rubble. And second, in case of emergency with Buster Cannon. For IBF, um, the only use I found on this fight is the anti-tampering shock. So the robots will always channel that AoE that's like 8 yards around them. And if you end up getting hit, then you will be stunned. So if you do get stunned, then just pop IBF and it will free you from it. Because mo more often than not, if you get stunned by one of them, um, you know, there's more robots nearby since you try to group them and then you just end up in this chain stun and end up dying. So using IBF on that in case you do get hit is pretty beneficial. Moving on to Stormwall Blockade, this is actually one of the fights that I didn't find AMS very useful to cheesing abilities, but it is useful for just mitigating damage. Uh, so most of the damage on this fight is magic damage, be that from the orb, from the electric shocks, from the soak mechanic. Pretty much everything on this fight is magic damage, so you can use AMS to mitigate it. The only thing that is probably notable is being able to solo soak Ire of the Deep. That is the phase 2 circle that normally you would put multiple people in to split the damage. But if you just AMS and stand in it, usually one other person will try to soak it as well. You will essentially take no damage from it. Moving on to Lady Jaina Proudmore. So here there's a few things that you can cheese. First of all, it's a Ring of Ice in phase 1. So whenever she channels the Ring of Ice, Normally you have to run out, stand in the fire, so you don't get rooted. Um, as a DK, just stay next to the boss, keep DPSing her. Don't stand in the fire, just press AMS right before the cast goes off. It will prevent the damage, or mitigate the damage rather, and it will prevent you from being rooted. The second thing is in the first intermission. Um, whenever you're tracking down where Jaina is, you will have glacial shards kind of move towards you constantly. And... Normally, if you get hit by one of those, you get instantly frozen. However, if you AMS, that will prevent the freeze and simply absorb that glacial shard. In a phase two, um, whenever someone drops an avalanche, there will be these um, little ice flows, I suppose, coming out from it. And if you get hit by those, you end up getting rooted. So again, here you can AMS or you can Wraith Walk to break the root. And Wraith Walk works on all of her other roots as well. In Phase 1, random people get rooted. Um, and if I remember correctly, in Phase 2 as well, people just get randomly rooted because she casts on them. And if that does happen, then you can just Wraith Walk to break that root. Now, for Death's Advance, the Shattering Lance, so whenever someone gets frozen, she starts casting a Lance towards them, and that knocks you back. Now, there's some points in this fight where positioning is kind of wonky, and maybe you're not able to dodge those lances. Simply that's advance and will prevent the knockback. And that is pretty important, especially it's about to knock you back into a patch of ice or something, just to mitigate some stacks. The Siegebreaker Blast is probably the last notable mechanic that we can cheese. Uh, Siegebreaker Blast does fall off damage, so you want to run it as far from your raid as possible. And it also slows you. So here you can simply death's advance to prevent and mitigate that slow and simply run it out of the raid. And that concludes all of the fights. So it is worth noting that IBF wasn't brought up that much. You can always use IBF as a simple damage mitigation tool, very efficient. And also with anti-magic shell, it's definitely not exclusive that you should only use it on the abilities that I talked about. There's definitely merit in anti-magic shelling just to prevent some damage from happening in high damage situations. So sometimes you will want to cheese mechanics, other times it is just a defensive cooldown, but that is up to you guys how you end up using it. Thank you so much for watching this video and I hope you found it helpful. If you have any questions or concerns or comments, just leave them in the section below.
Again, thanks for watching. Hope you liked the video. Please sub to the channel, and I'll see you on the next one.